In this video, I'm going to talk about solving um, systems of linear equations using substitution. There's a, a bunch of different ways you can solve systems of linear equations, and this is just one of them. So, a couple things to talk about. Um, so, again, your, your linear equations, well, if you graph them, that just means you get lines. So, there's kind of three possibilities when you, um, when you solve these. One thing that can happen graphically is well your lines will cross in one place and that means you have exactly one solution algebraically what's going to happen you'll be able to solve for you'll get some number for x you'll get some number for for y and that'll imply that you have exactly one solution so if you get x equals something y equals something that means that they're crossing in one place um, another possibility here is um, you know, you'll do some algebra and you'll end up getting some sort of nonsensical statement out, like perhaps 8 equals 0. Well, 8 doesn't equal 0, so what that's going to imply is that your two lines are actually parallel, and in that case, they never cross, and there's not going to be any solution at all. The last case that can happen is, well, you go to graph what looks like two different lines. They actually turn out to be the same line and what's going to happen algebraically is you'll get a statement that says something like 0 equals 0 and in that case it just means you have infinitely many solutions so let's do uh, let's do a couple of these using again substitution suppose we have this system of equations 2x plus 4y equals 4 and y equals um, x minus 2 so what I'm going to do is, since I have the y isolated already, I'm going to rewrite this as 2x plus 4 times y, but now I'm going to plug in the fact that y is equal to x minus 2, so I'll plug that in there, and then that's going to equal 4. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow me to solve this for x. So I'll get 2x plus 4x. When I distribute, I'll get 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, equals 4. 2x and 4x is 6x. If I add 8 to both sides, I'll get 12 on the other side. And then that'll tell me that x equals 2. So now I've got one of my values. And now to find the other value, I can take either one of my two original equations and simply plug in the fact that x equals 2. Well, it seems to me like the second one's probably the easiest one to use. So if I plug in the fact that x equals 2, I'll get that y is 2 minus 2, or that y equals 0. So it says my solution is the point 2 comma 0. And notice if you plug 2, 0 into the first one, you'll get 4 on the left. And if you plug um, 2 comma 0 into the second one, you'll get um, well, you'll get 0 equals 0. If you go to graph these two, you'll find out that these are actually crossing in one place, namely at the point 2 comma 0. So let's do another one here, x plus 3y equals 6, and 2x plus 6y equals, it's supposed to be a negative 12. I'm going to take my first equation here and solve this for x. It seems like that would be the easiest thing to do. I'll get x equals 6 minus 3y. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the second equation. I'll get 2 times the x value, which is going to be 6 minus 3y. And then I still have the plus 6y floating around equals negative 12. So I'll get 12 minus 6y plus 6y equals negative 12. And that'll give me, it looks like 12 equals negative 12. Well, again, this is one of those kind of nonsensical statements. 12 doesn't equal negative 12 ever. So what that simply says is, is that our original system of equations has no solution. So if I do one other one here, a little noise in the background there, sorry for that. So let me do one other one here. I've got 2x minus 3y equals 6 and 4x minus 6y equals 12. Again, you could solve for either one you want. Um, you know, I guess I'll solve for the x again. That seems, I don't know, maybe easier to me. It seems pretty equivalent. 
So if I add 3y to both sides, I'll get 6 plus 3y. I'm just rewriting my first equation. I'll divide, divide both sides by 2. So that'll give me x equals, remember you can, when you have a single thing in the bottom, you divide each thing by that number. So I'll get x equals 6 over 2, which is 3, plus 3 halves times y. And again, what I'm going to do is now plug that into the other equation. So I'll get 4 times x. Again, x is going to be this 3 plus 3 over 2 times y. I still have a minus 6y floating around, equals 12. Well, if I distribute on the left side, I'll get 4 times 3, which is 12. If I distribute to the other term, I'll get 4 times 3, which is 12 over 2. I'll get a positive 6y. Minus 6y equals 12. And here my 6y's are going to cancel out, and I'm going to get the statement that 12 equals 12. And this is equivalent to what I was talking to before. If you get um, where you have something equal something, it turns out that these are actually going to be the same line and you're going to actually have infinitely many solutions. Okay, and notice one thing that's important to notice here. Notice if you multiply this first equation by 2, by 2, by 2, by 2, you'll get the second one. If I multiply 2x by 2, I'll get 4x. If I multiply negative 3y by 2, I'll get negative 6y. If I multiply 6 by 2, I'll get 12. So if one line is a multiple of the other, it's going to turn out that these are parallel lines. So, you know, this is one that once you kind of get the hang of this, you could just look at this and say, oh, well, this is really the same line because if I multiply the first one by 2, I'll get the second one. There's going to be infinitely many solutions in this case. <clears throat> All right, so this is the method of solving um, linear systems of equations using substitution. Um, maybe not necessarily the most straightforward way, um, but the idea is simple enough. You solve for x or you solve for y in one of the equations. You plug that into the other one, and then you get a value. Um, if you once you get a value, you plug it into the other, and again, that's assuming you have a single solution. If you get a statement like 0 equals 0, it means you have infinitely many, and if you get a statement like, you know, pi equals 54, well, that doesn't happen. That means you have no solution. So there's also, also ways to do these using elimination by addition. You can actually write these in a, a matrix form, and I'll do some examples of that in some other videos. So if you have some questions or comments, um, I'm always happy to hear them. Feel free to shoot me an email.